everyone. Welcome to Thursday Talk. Yeah. This is Miss Thursday over here. And I'm Pastor Rick. This is Ella V. And mm -hmm. um, Ella has a special word to share this morning, taken from Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, which I'll read in just one second. Let me say hello. Hi, Tony. Hey, Danica. Hey, Gigi. Hey, Angela. Hey, Eva. And Hello. Let's, so let's see five people on here. That's good. Um, good to see you all. Uh, you could hit your share button. We may get a few extra people that way. Uh, I think I'm going to do that in a second myself. Let's see if I can do that. Ella, how are you today? Very good. How are you? I'm a little stressed. Uh oh. Which is the topic of the discussion today? Stress. Yeah. Uh, so first, before anything else, we should pray. Why don't you go ahead and pray? Okay. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Yes. I hope that you give me and Pop the right words to say and that it helps someone out there to not be stressed or anything. And that you send your angels down there to protect us and to comfort us. I hope you sing a song over us. Amen. Amen and amen. Have you ever felt like you're just sitting in a chair and you should, like, buckle up? Like in a car? Yeah. Maybe. Does he feel like that now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't want to fall out of that big chair. So let me read. Let me read uh, Philippians two four to get us started here today. Okay. I'm, I'm going to read it from my Bible, but you, I know you have it in yours as well. Let each of you <clears throat> look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. You know, then <clears throat> uh, Paul goes into a whole a section of the next part of Philippians chapter 2 when he says to let, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. And then he talks about the work of Jesus, how Jesus emptied himself from heaven, came down to earth, lived among us, and so forth. And, he's, and so he's saying, let this, let this heart, let this mind be in you that Christ had. He came to give his life as a ransom. So he, so going back to verse four, he's saying, "Give your life to other people. You know, sh share your heart with other people. Try to help other people the way that Jesus helped us and continues to help us." Yes. Is that it, basically? <laughs> <laughs> so why is that called stressed out? Wow. Well, Let's talk about it. Or should I just read the story right now? Yeah, read the story, okay. and then we'll talk about it. Stress. You've probably heard that word once or twice, or maybe a zillion times. That's because every person, no matter how old they are, has stress in their life. So, what is stress? What is stress? Wow. Stress is like when you're feeling like... Like you're about to explode! <laughs> yeah. Right. Stress is the way your body reacts to when to what you're thinking and feeling. It actually starts in your brain. When you feel worried, nervous, upset, or afraid, or angry about something, your brain sends out a message to your body. Hey, I'm feeling a little stressed here, it says. <laughs> That's when your body starts its stress response. Response. Respond. That's mm -hmm. how, yeah, that's how your body responds. Everyone's stress responds a little different. Your hands might sweat and shake, or you might get a stomach ache, or your heart m might beat faster and you have trouble sleeping, or your voice might shake and you sneeze. Right. When you're stressed, when you're stressed, take a big, deep, long breath. Then maybe a few more. Next, take a look around. Figure out what's making you stress. <laughs> Is it a big test? Is it tryouts for the team? Is it heading off to camp on your own? If there's something you can do about it, then do it. Study, practice, or pack extra bug spray. <laughs> <laughs> then stop. Then stop thinking about yourself and shift your focus to other people. Ah. For example, if you're nervous about heading off to that new camp, 
changes there, you can't, chances are there, chances are there is someone else who's stressed about the very same thing. Mm -hmm. Decide to encourage them, smile, say hello, and be a friend. When you think about others instead of yourself, you soon find that you feel much better. <sighs> and you've helped someone else. Jesus would call it interested in the lives of others. Right. And it's something he did a lot too. Yeah, he really did. Yes. Hey, he Ella, you ever, you ever like notice people like just, you know, like if you go somewhere, even yeah. if you go to church yeah. and you just look at someone's face mm -hmm. and you could tell what's going on kind of. Not exactly, but you know that something's going on that may not be the very, very good thing. Yeah, it's called discernment. You know, like you could discern if someone's having a rough day just by looking at them, observing them, and, and then hearing what they have to say. Let me, let me go back here, and uh, I want to see a couple of things that people wrote. Um, yeah, Angela, Eva, Pamela, David. Yeah, David Newfell. Um, is uh, praying. Uh, okay, so David David has a truck now, or, or I, I think it's a truck, but he's got to get it registered and all that stuff. So now that's been an area of stress for him for a, a, a long time since he's been down in that school in Connecticut. Um, so David, hang in there, brother. You know, hang in there. Uh, the Lord will help you. He got you this far. He will help you the rest of the way. Uh, Tony said that... Uh, <laughs> I remind him that he needs a haircut too. Yeah, I did get a haircut today. Uh, my friend Jorge. Okay, stress, Gigi said, stress is when you feel the weight of the world on your shoulders. However, uh, thankful that we can give our woes to Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. Whoa! <laughs> our woes. So yeah, so th there, there is a, a lot of stress in the world today. Yes. You know, I mean, uh, so you're as a as a young lady, you have a diff you have a certain amount of stress. That may be different than my stress, but you have stress. I have stress. People have stress. You know, a lot, a lot of times we live on a busy road out here. Yeah. We see a lot of people drive by that I can tell they're stressed out. You know how I could tell? Mm -hmm. There's so many accidents out there. <laughs> Someone's not paying attention, and they there's like every week or two there's an accident out front. Yeah. And someone rear ends somebody and they're all stressed out and the police have to come and the fire department comes and all the sirens go off and all this stuff happens. Did you hear last night? There were like so much Yes, I did. I did. I don't know what that was what that was, but there must have been an accident further up the road that way. Yeah, like a big one. And, there uh, were... and you know how it is nowadays that there's a, a little fender bender, the police come, the EMT comes, the fire trucks come, the whole place is there. Well, they want to make sure if anyone is hurt, but um, most of the time, no one's really hurt. But I mean, there could be. Yeah. Gotta make sure nobody's hurt. Hurt, right. You know, one time we, we uh, I didn't see it, but I saw it the next day. Uh, across the street, a car was going this way, across the lane, and crossed uh, across the street all the way into the, the old school over there, and tore down the fence and flipped over and the guy, I saw the guy jump out of the car, actually. I did see him. He wasn't hurt. I went over there. And I said, hey, are you all right? He goes, yeah, yeah, I just had an accident. I said, I know. <laughs> and um, someone with him called the police, and there was a whole lot of commotion. But, yeah, a lot of stuff happens. People are preoccupied, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So that means, well, what does that mean? It means uh, Philippians 2, 4 says, let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but for the interests of others. So... I'll give you an illustration. Today I went to Walmart after my haircut. I did. I had to buy some new shoelaces because my shoelaces broke. And had to buy some uh, some legal yellow, legal size yellow paper for my notes. But anyway, the lady at the counter, I think she was having a tough day. Why? Because you know, because I go up there, and she was like, nothing, no, no hello. So usually they say hello at least. So I, I, I reversed it. I said, hey, how you doing? You know, how are you today? Oh, fine. <laughs> but I tried to bring a smile to her face 
and just, you know, I wanted to be interested enough to say, you know, it's going to be a good day. And I said, goodbye. Thank you. Hey, mom, good to see you. Good to see you here today. Uh, we'll be giving you a call later. Uh, Tony said, even music has tension and release, balance is a bit very, that's a profound statement right there. Stop. So anyway, all, all that to say. Stop. Now we should get deeper into the story, right? If we can, yes. Yeah. Now's the time. So some people, you might think like stress is an everyday thing. Like it's normal to have stress. Yeah. But it's not. Oh. It's actually a spirit of heaviness. Ooh, I like that. And I think you're right, actually. And it is not normal. To, it's like, it's not good to have. Right. It's just real heaviness holding you down. And if you keep it, then that's a whole different story. If you keep it, like, like you said in the story, it could cause physical problems, right? Because people, you know, a lot of times we hear people go to the doctor they have a problem when actually the problem is stress related. It's not physical, it's stress. Stress causes physical problems sometimes. Yes. So it's a spirit of heaviness. It's not normal at all. You shouldn't have it. So mm -hmm. you shouldn't think that it's normal. That's good. So what do we do about it? Well, the, it tries to steal our faith and our hope. And it tries to tell us you're not loved and you'll never make it. Right. It's just like if you're having a big test and you're like, I'm never going to pass. Right. It, when you have stress, it's easy to find the littlest of problems. Like, oh no, we ran out of chips. We're never going to have a <laughs> chip again. Just no, but well, we can have some back. peanuts instead. I just thought I'd throw that into the story. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, right, right. Like, so, in other words, to, we have to lighten up. Yeah. We have to lighten up. So, how do we do that? Because sometimes I think that by nature, but like my own personality, personally, sometimes I do carry a lot of stress, and I, I carry concerns in my heart, and on my, like, I'm always thinking about people and stuff and things I have to do. So, what do we do about this? Well, you can thank God. For all you have, just be happy with what you have. Yeah. And not what's going. And not be, like, worried about everything else. Right. What may be like, oh, no. What if I buy that expensive TV and then I don't have enough money to get the food that I need? Mm -hmm. It's probably never going to happen because if you had the money to get the expensive TV... I think you would have a lot left over. You have to budget your money then. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we have to be thankful for the things that we are blessed with. Yeah. Yeah. And pray with authority. Play, pray with authority. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Okay. Do you do that? Yeah. How do you do it? Well, just really think about what you're praying for and really be positive about it. Okay. And really act like I'm saying this for real. I know it's true, and I want this to happen. Okay. Just and I'm, really and I'm going to trust God to help me yeah. do it. Okay. Yeah. And I believe God will. Help. I believe God will help me. I really trust God yeah. that He will help me. So like, if you have stress, pray with authority. Like, if you have stress and you pray, just say this stress. The spirit of heaviness has no place here. You are not welcome in my life. And God will take it away. It will disappear. Right, right. And you just got to believe that. That reminds me of something, Ella. Mm -hmm. Let's see, what did Tony say? It's like we're walking in mm -hmm. fear, which brings on stress instead of walking in faith. Hey, that's a profound yeah. statement too, Tony. That's great. But Tony, you remember, and, and uh, Pamela, you probably remember, Stacy, you might remember, back in the day, it seems like I'm always remembering songs that we used to sing. We used to sing a song, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your hands to the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. Lift up your hands and sing. So put on the garment of praise 
for the spirit of heaviness. So in other words, this is good for a congregation. You come into a church setting, if anyone's feeling heavy and burdened, well, put on praise over that, over that, um, over that spirit of heaviness. And the praise is like fighting the battle and increasing our faith to trust God. And those problems seem a lot less as we begin to realize how big and powerful God is. Yeah. And uh, there's, there's another song we used to sing. Um, when I look into your holiness, when I look into your loveliness, all the things that surround become shadows in the light of you. I worship you, I worship you. Um, so when we enter into, into prayer and praise, our problems get, look smaller. And this is the thing. The problem didn't change at all. It's just our perspective of the problem. So we need to pray and, and worship and, and recognize and realize how big and how, how important God is in our lives. Yeah. So I think stress has a tendency to overwhelm our faith. Yeah. So, stress is not a sin. Okay. It's not a sin. That's you, good. Yeah. You don't want stress. Nobody wants stress. It just is a bad feeling, right? Yeah. So it's not a sin if you, like, you can sin and, like, like know you're doing it, kind of, but, like, think it's all fine. But stress is not that kind of sin. It's not any sin. Right. It's just things that come on you when you're having feelings. Right, right, right. So it's never a stress. But there is a better way than to have stress. Okay. You can, there's a better way. You can get rid of the stress. Though. Okay, let's, let's address that. Okay. How do we do that? Well, <laughs> just really, if you have stress and you think there's got to be a better way, I shouldn't have this spirit of heaviness on me. This is not right. It's not normal to have. So just pray and just like, Go to your schedule, get, like, make time in between two things to really go and keep praying and pray with authority and thank God for everything you have. Okay. And stress will pass away. All right. Let me ask you something. What are these scriptures over here? Uh, yeah. Do you want to read them? I'll look them up. Okay. Is that for this or that last week? Oh, that was... Something I was just writing. Okay. But All right. So, want to read? I'll look it up and you could read it, okay? So okay. Isaiah 61 3. Yep. Oh, 61. Right there. <laughs> to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes the oil of God for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. All right, so the spirit of the Lord. Now, this is a very interesting scripture, by the way, Isaiah 61. This is what Jesus quoted in Luke chapter 4 when he was called upon to read the scripture in the temple. He quoted Isaiah 61. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort those who mourn, to comfort those who mourn in Zion. This is what you just read to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy in the morning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That's the song. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your hands and sing. Or like it says, to give them beauty for ashes, like in the song. You give beauty for ashes. Oh. That's right. See, a lot of people recognize that. So there's a, there's a common trait among humanity that is stressed and worried and burdened. And the remedy, as you're saying, 
that Jesus came, you know, Jesus came with an anointing to break those bondages off of us. So we have to tap into that by prayer, by praise, by med uh, meditation. And James 1, 7. James 1, 7. Yeah. Mm -hmm. James. We will read 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 scriptures today for this. Okay, we have 10 minutes. Can we do it? Yeah. Okay. So. For let not the man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Okay, so let him. Let, I think we should read the verse before that. Oh, okay, but let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Right, and that man, let him not suppose he'll get anything. So that, that's what we were saying: to come boldly to the Lord, trust in the Lord. Uh, have a little bit of oomph when you pray and oomph. when you trust God, you know, let the Lord yeah. know, Lord, I, I'm having a problem, but I'm going to trust you to break through. Pray with authority. Right. That's right. I like that. Philippians 4, 6. Philippians 4, 6. Yeah. So if anyone wants to write these down. Yeah. Oh, Gigi's writing them down there. <laughs> oh, good. So Isaiah 61, 3. And then James... 1 7 and now Philippians 4 6 which says boy this hits the nail on the head be anxious for nothing but in everything but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request request be made known to God And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Amen. That is another song. How's that go? Don't you worry oh, oh yeah. about anything. Right. Just pray. And just God did something <laughs> like that. So you have a lot of songs in your heart, too. Mm -hmm. That's right. So Tony says, that's why anointed music is so powerful, to release the spirit of that. Uh, absolutely. A lot of times, the songs that we sing are literally the word of God that someone put to music. And, and if, it's not, if it's not actually the word of God, it's a concept in the word of God that someone paraphrased to oh, bring that into a song. I got the song now. Oh, go ahead. Don't you worry about anything, just pray about everything, tell God what you need, and thank Him for what He's done. Yeah. That's that CD that Gigi has, right? Yeah. We used to play that all the time when you pipsed the little pipsqueaks. Do not lean on your own understanding something. Yeah. Guide your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Right. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. I used to listen to that like every night. Yeah? Yeah. Mommy would play it on her phone. Yeah, sometimes we play it at home still. Mm -hmm. Just to fill the music, the, the home with, with worship music. Um, that's it. All right. Oh, that's it. Oh, no. Oh, no. 2 Two. Timothy 1.7. 2 Timothy 1, 7. Yeah. Oh, I love this verse. Me too. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and a sound mind. Boy, that's, oh, a, yeah, that's a good one. I mean, a lot of people focus on the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear. And I, I do get that. And I... I but also, he's given us a sound mind. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to fly off the handle. We don't have to go crazy worrying. We don't have to be all stressed out because he's given us a soundness and a confidence and um, an assurity in our heart that everything's going to be okay as we put our trust and faith in him. So let's see. Um, oh, Gigi wrote the words. Don't you worry about anything. Just pray about everything. 
I sang that to all of them as babies. And it's still in my heart. It's called Scripture Lullabies. I would highly recommend that CD to anybody. Yeah. Uh, if you have kids, grandkids, it's, it's great. It, even if you don't, it's good, mellow worship music. Scripture lullabies. Tony said, well, well, uh, can't wait till you come out with your own CD. That was mine. <laughs> oh, yeah? I made a new song, but it's not <laughs> finished. I stopped at the bridge. Well, you want to give us a little hint? I guess. Is this the... F this is the... Why don't you do that? Okay. Told me a story. Thought it was true. Believed you to the end. I really knew. All these wasted days saying you were great. Thought it was okay to last by your true face. There is no power greater than the name. The name of Jesus. The one who saves. There is no power greater than the name. The name who overcame the grave. And then <laughs> there's right here. Is one. Never thought I'd see the day. The king showed me the way. Took me out of lies, answered my wise. Cause there's no power greater than the name. The name of Jesus, the one who saves. There is no power greater than the name. The name who overcame the grave. He said it was okay. Now I know the way, away from the pain. Saved in Jesus' name. Oh, so it's a little rapish. Yeah. Rapish with a with a singing uh, chorus. Ah, uh, my favorite is the ver the the verses right here. Yeah, I, I, let me read it just so everyone could hear it. Real but quick. um, this this um verse is supposed to be there, and that's not. Okay. That's not supposed to be there. Told me a story, thought it was true, believed you that, till the end. That really, I really knew. That means like, if Satan told you a story, like, God is powerless. Mm. And he is, and that he said that he is the good one. Ah. But then in the end, you really found oh, out. Oh, so yeah, I got you. Yeah. So I had a little revelation. All these wasted days saying you were great. Thought I was okay till I saw you. Ooh, that's about the enemy. Yeah. Wow. Like, all the wasted days saying that Satan was great. Wow. And you thought it was okay. Wow. Till you saw his true face. I like that. Because there's no power greater than the name of Jesus. Than the name, the name of Jesus, the one who saves. There's no power greater than the name, the name who overcame the grave. All right, and then this verse, right? Yeah. Never thought I'd see the day. The king showed, the king me. showed me the way, took me out of the lies, answered my whys. Yeah. Wow. And that's... then the chorus again, and then the bridge. You said it was okay, now I know the way. Away from the pain, saved in Jesus' name. Yeah. Wow, Ella, it sounds like you, you kind of went through something. And, and you were following, you know, the wrong voice, but then you realized that's that's the wrong voice. But now you hear the the true voice. This started out like running home. You know why? Why? Because I've been singing the chorus, but I've been singing the first verse. Told me a story that was true. Believed to the end, I really knew. Like a thousand times, when I'm either getting dressed. Yeah. And putting my PJs on. Yeah. I always sing it when I'm alone. I have a question for you, Ella. Where do these songs come from? Sometimes I just when I like get dressed and stuff, or like sometimes I just go upstairs and I'm alone. So I think of you just things to sing, and then a week later, I'm like, I should make that into a song. <laughs> So yeah. I sing it to mommy, and then I make verses and a chorus, and then 
I sing it to everyone. And it's a new song. That's great. So after I finish this, I'll have four songs. That's really good. We have to get them all together and start doing them at church. I want to teach the congregation. We could, we could incorporate them into our repertoire of what it's we sing. Running Home, which everybody probably knows. Right. Can't See Me. Right. Can't See You. Which I, I feel like I made that. I just thought after Running Home, I was so happy about writing songs. I did it by myself one day. Yeah. Yeah, and that's how it happened. But That's <laughs> great. And then Can't See. Wait. I have a song, song inside, and I'm not sure what this is going to be called. Okay. But I have those three that are finished. But, okay, that's it. <laughs> All right, Ella. I, it's 1230. Maybe, no. maybe you could pray for everyone, and uh, then we're going to say goodbye. Well, thank you for okay. joining us. Uh, Philippians 2, 4 was the initial verse. Will you pray right now, honey? Yes. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. I hope that in anybody's lives, the spirit of heaviness will leave totally and that you just bring peace and joy and love into their hearts and let them have a sound mind and that you send your angels down to protect us and to comfort us. And I hope that... If they have a song inside or something to say, that they would sing it. Or they would say it to anybody, either by themselves, and they will pray with authority. In the name of Jesus, I hope you sing your song over them. Amen. Well, do you, do you want to put the intro on? Yeah, let's, let's okay. put on the intro music again. Thank you for joining us. We're going to leave some music on for a few minutes if you want to make a comment. And yeah. we'll see you next time, okay? God bless you. Bye. Thank you, Ella, for a good word. <laughs>